here Wednesday and since we are in Camp Anorama and we're almost to the middle y'all I thought I'd talk about how to write more how to build your daily routine because part of what NaNoWriMo events do camp and NaNoWriMo in November is to help you build a writing routine a daily routine some of us can't write every day some of us can't write on the weekend but really you need to build a routine even if you are only writing 50 words 100 words, something, it really helps when you stick with doing the same thing. In order to build a routine, people say school of thought is that anything you do every day for 28 days becomes a habit. And this is a good habit to have. We're going to start with the first thing is to build a routine, a ritual. What you can do is have a location, make it yours, whether it's a corner somewhere or an actual room, make it a dedicated space for your writing. It creates a ritual so that every time you go to that space and you sit down to write, it's part of your writing routine so that you mentally know when you come to your desk or when you light that candle or when you wear that t-shirt or when you wear those slippers or when you wear those sweatpants or that hat or that sweater, it's your writing time. Another thing you want to do is to have a time. Some people are more of a morning writer. Some people are more of a nighttime writer. It really just depends on you. I'm a bit of both. I find that if I break my writing up and I write some in the morning and I write some in the midday and then I write some at night, it's easier for me. It helps break my routine up a little and it also helps keep me from being stressed out and burnt out and spent. A routine, a ritual, do you triggers that's what lighting the candle is or sitting down at your desk or wearing that shirt or those sweatpants that kind of thing those are some of the triggers that help you know it's your time to write in order to build that routine you need to commit to your writing and if you start small and you break down your larger goals because you've got like maybe a yearly goal a quarterly goal a monthly goal a daily goal break it down so that it's easier to manage and so that when you're looking at it you don't get stressed out about that bigger number or that larger goal another thing is that turn off the distraction either leave your phone somewhere else or turn it off turn the notifications down on silent or whatever you can turn your wi-fi off use background noise if you need use headphones if you want and you can time your writing like i said you can time your writing so that you break it up so that it's not in one big chunk because our attention span is really not that long 20 minutes 30 minutes it's usually about the max that you're really going to get which is why when you do word sprints which also really help you build your word count and help you write more you do time to word sprints start with the smaller goals break down your bigger goals into smaller goals turn off the distractions and then you could time your writing you can also create a writing plan based on like your goals so that you know what you're doing like let's say you have you have these big bigger target goals so for the year you want to finish like for me I want to finish book one, I want to outline book two, I want to edit and revise book one, and I want to write, start writing, get at least the very first part of, maybe the first draft of, or the first half of book two written before the end of the year. Those are my goals, so I had to break them down. I broke them down into quarterly goals, and then I broke them down into monthly goals. And like I said, this right now, this month in April is my, I'm going to finish novel one. and. Over the next few months, I'll be editing novel one and I'll be so that in July, I will be revising book one. Hopefully August will be my last ditch effort to get some revisions done before I turn my book over to beta readers in September. And then my goal is to use September and October to outline and research book two. I have some shiny ideas and stuff for book two because it's a series and then I'll be using November to write book two. Hopefully I will get at least 50,000 words which will be half of the novel so that maybe in December I'll be looking over what my beta readers did for book one or I'll be finishing book two one or the other. I haven't figured it out whether I want to take the break or just go ahead and finish out writing the novel in December. That's kind of the things you might also want to keep like some kind of log, a calendar and put stickers on it that show whether you got your writing accomplished. Keep a log in, in a notebook and just write it down. Another thing that I suggest is morning pages. And I have talked about this because of the artist way. And I've talked about how I've kind of struggled with some of my morning pages. And maybe some people like me 
or midday or afternoon or evening pages kind of people. But really it doesn't matter if you're writing them in the a.m., midday, afternoon, if you're writing them when you first get up. And for me, I have ADHD and anxiety. When I first get up, I'm not coherent. I'm not coherent enough to sit down and write. I'm just not. I have that first cup of coffee, and because I don't take medicine for my ADHD, coffee actually, and I don't, believe it or not, I'm a sipper. So I don't really drink as much as it seems, but coffee helps me concentrate. It helps me focus. It does, for me, what ADHD medicine does. If I drink too much of it, though, it has the opposite. After I drink my cup of coffee, or at least half of a cup of coffee, I can sit down and do my morning pages. And whether I've woke up at 6 o'clock or 10 o'clock or noon, it's still my pages. So, But they really help. They help you with clarity. They help you with your creativity. They help you with your productivity. Because if you get in the habit of writing every day, whether it's the morning pages and that's about 750 words if you write three pages maybe you only write a page that's 250 words so I think as long as you get into the routine of writing every day you've written something and then it puts you in the mindset to write more another thing like I talked about other than tracking your progress with your word count like say on a calendar or in a planner or a notebook whatever works for you you might want to think about improvement now you can improve yourself as a writer as a person one you want to think about reading books on the craft of writing make a goal to read a certain amount of books on the craft of writing because we don't know everything and there are successful writers out there who have who have some really good books on there on the craft of writing another thing you need to do with the improvement part is self-care you need to take care of yourself one of the important things is to take breaks in your writing. I know sometimes we get in the writing zone and we don't realize how long we've been writing, but you need to get up out of the chair and go exercise. Do something that gets you up and moving. Go outside for a few minutes, anything. You can also check out blogs from other writers, um, websites where they are talking about their experiences with the craft of writing, with writing in general. And remember that there's no fast, hard rule for writing, that you have to do what works for you. And that if you are doing the some of the same things, if you get into that routine and you have your ritual, you get into that routine, after a while, it's going to become an everyday thing. It's going to not be, oh, I've got to do this. It's just going to become a, a habit. I, there are a lot of other things out there that's that the Promodera or Promodera or Pomodero or something like that technique. That's the, you know, writing for timed writing and taking like breaks. And um, there's also uh, programs out there that will time your writing. You can do a little egg timer like for the kitchen. I break up my writing. I break it up by, I, by doing other things that are creative like drawing and journaling and things like that. I also break it up by doing my, my blog which is part of me as a writer because it's a marketing, it's a branding myself, and it's writing, and it's good because it keeps my mind in a good place. I also check out things like The Right Stuff, which we're doing a live chat tonight. We're going to talk about procrastination, which really hinders your daily writing habit and your routine. I think the last thing I want to talk about is just getting your ass in the chair and writing. Some people want to wait on the muse to strike. If I rated on the muse to strike, I may never write. Sometimes it hits me and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I just have to kind of start writing and that's one of the things that I've learned about the morning pages is that it really helps me get into the mind set of, of creativity and writing. I'm in writer mode. I have on baggy jeans and my Converse low tops that are faded. I have on my NaNoWriMo winter shirt from last year. My hair is in braids and it's, yeah, I got porcupine things sticking out some. And I've got on minimal makeup and I got my hair back out of my face. I'm ready to write, ready to rock and roll. It's time for me to do uh, another bit of writing. I'm really happy with my word count so far but treat your writing like it is your day job like you it, you are required to spend your day doing a certain amount of things like okay that's what the time and place is for you come to your desk or you go to your little corner whatever it is you write you're going to take a break just like you would at work maybe a lunch hour maybe a 15 minute break whatever you're going to take a break when you're at work you're not doing like you have different tasks that you do well with writing break you're writing up into the various tasks that you need to do, whether it's writing some character sketches or making a vision board or 
working on your blog or your website, um, marketing, all kinds of different things come into play with your writing, not just the actual sitting down at the desk and writing your words. There are a lot of other things that have to do with writing and they're important too, but if you don't write your words, you don't have anything to brand. That's my tip for the day. Um, my, I guess really my big thing is that forming a daily writing habit, that's something I have struggled with is making um, my writing, my, my day job, my real jobs, what I call it, because it is my job, working on things to improve myself as a writer, which is why I started The Artist Way to begin with, building my routine and setting my goals and breaking my goals up so that they're not overwhelming, tracking my progress. Right now I'm tracking my progress one way or the other because I'm actually participating in Camp Nanorama. We have to do our word count and enter it in there. And you know what? Hmm. For like two or three days, I didn't put my word count in there and all. I actually need to go in and edit my word count per day because I just put the total in there and I need to break it up. Not that it really matters much, but I want to kind of see how it is. And I think whether you're writing 50 words a day or 5,000 words a day, if you're writing every day, you're building that routine. You're building it, that habit, the daily writing habit. And I know there are some people, like Persephone said, she can't really write on the weekends. So she writes Monday through Friday. And there are a lot of writers who do that. Who write Monday through Friday, that's their day job. And then on the weekends, maybe they do other things that have to do with their writing, like social media or research or vision boards or any inspiration, going somewhere out where you're doing research for your novel, like maybe traveling or something, you know, and that would work. That works well too. I have actually thought a lot about changing my routine to where I, where I write Monday through Friday once Camp Manorama is over. I think I may end up switching and writing Monday through Friday and then using Saturday and Sunday to do things like my inspiration board or research and things like that that have to do with my writing but aren't actual writing. So I use the weekends for some of what I consider to be the fun stuff. Not that writing isn't fun because writing is definitely fun. That's why I write. I love writing. But doing some of the other things that are fun too. I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, thank you for watching. Like I said, I'm going to do a Q&A probably next week. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the do or do within reason. Some questions I'm not going to answer. So, you know, but if you have questions within reason, like I said, put them down in the do or do. I've got a log. I'm writing them down in my notebook so that I can, along with who asked the question, so I can cover those questions. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.